Welcome back to the Security Simplified series. Last time, we talked about some of the most common ways applications implement single sign-on and how attackers can take over other people's accounts when these mechanisms are implemented improperly. This time, let's talk about another popular SSO mechanism, OAuth, and how attackers can compromise it. Want to get rewarded for finding security bugs like this one? Integrity is a bug bounty platform that pays you for reporting security vulnerabilities. With more than 100 public and private targets to test your skills on, you can test your hacking skills on real targets legally and get rewarded for it. Sign up now with the link in the description. OAuth facilitates SSO by managing credentials in one single place. Within an OAuth system, the only place that stores the user's credentials is the identity provider. When you log into an application using OAuth, the service provider requests access to resources from the identity provider. These resources might include your email address, contacts, birth date, and anything else that's needed to log you in. This is called a scope. The first request in this whole process is that the service provider will send the request for an authorization code. This request will include the service provider's client ID, a redirect URI, a scope list, and a state which is essentially a CSR of token. And then the identity provider will ask the user to grant access to the service provider, typically via a pop-up window. After the user agrees to the permissions, the identity provider will send the redirect URI specified by the service provider an authorization code. The service provider can then exchange an access token from the identity provider using the authorization code along with their client ID and secret. The service provider will also specify a URL where the identity provider should send the access token. The identity provider will send back an access token, which can be used to access the user's resources. And in this case, the service provider will retrieve the user's information associated with that access token and log that user in. So how can attackers compromise this process and log in as someone else? If the attacker can steal the access token of another user, it can trick the identity provider into giving the service provider another user's information. Sites often have HTTP parameters or URL parameters that cause the web application to redirect to another URL without any user action. And open redirects are a type of vulnerabilities that happen when an attacker can manipulate the value of this parameter and cause users to be redirected off-site. A common scenario is when a website redirects users to their original location after they log in. When a user visits their dashboard at slash dashboard but is not logged in, the application redirects them to the login page and then it will redirect the user to their dashboard located at the original location after the user logs in. Notice that the site is using a URL parameter to determine the location to redirect the user. During an open redirect attack, users are unintentionally redirected to an external site. The attacker can provide the victim with a login URL that specifies a redirect URL to a malicious site and redirect the user elsewhere. This will enable attackers to pretend that they are the legitimate site and trick users into entering their credentials or downloading malware. So how do open redirects help attackers steal access tokens? OAuth access token thefts rely on the manipulation of the redirect URI parameter in the OAuth process to steal the access token from the victim's account. Since the redirect URI is where the access token will be sent, most identity providers will only send the access token to URLs on an approved whitelist and reject any other redirect URI. But open redirect vulnerabilities can help attackers bypass this restriction. Access tokens are often communicated via a URL hash, which is after the pound sign in an URL and this portion of the URL survives all redirects. So if an attacker can make the OAuth flow redirect to the service provider and then to the attacker's domain, they can steal the access token from the URL hash, steal the access token, and gain access to the victim's account. 
If the service provider has an open redirect vulnerability, the attacker can construct a redirect URI that will eventually redirect back to their malicious domain. For example, let's say that this URL of the service provider will cause a redirect to attacker.com. The attacker can make the victim authenticate via this URL. And then when the victim uses this URL to authenticate, the redirect URL will cause the flow to redirect to the callback URL first on example.com and then to the attacker's domain. And then it's game over. The attacker can obtain the victim's access token and log in as the victim user. You can prevent this issue on your websites by providing your identity provider with a strict whitelist for the redirect URI and fixing any open redirect vulnerabilities that you find on your domain. And that's it for today's security lesson.